The uh, relay that I'm going to talk about here, first of all, is the AC clutch relay. And I'm going to show you how to read voltage. Um, when you read voltage, you put the black lead to a good ground. Okay? And I'm going to show you basic meter functions here. So, I can stick my leads in any one of these ports on volts and not hurt anything. And I'll know something. Because I know this is 85, 86, 30, and 87. Common, normally open, 85 coil, 86 coil. So I can simply start here, and because I see straight zeros, that means that that terminal is touching ground. I don't know why, but it is. This terminal, notice, has ghost voltage. So I've identified positive and negative by simply reading voltage. I know this side goes to ground, I know this side doesn't, and this side is open. So my guess would be 85 is ground, and 86 would be positive. And I'm doing that just by reading the meter. The ghost voltage there, notice that the leads are flipping, the ghost voltage indicates that you have an open circuit. Okay, now what about 30? Well, 30 goes to voltage. So right now, what I want you to get in the habit of doing is measuring voltage and then immediately loading the circuit. It's not a one-step process, it's two steps. Voltage, load it. When you load it, you're confirming that the wire is, is intact all the way back to the battery. So we 12 volts, load it, we're good all the way back to the battery. So 85 goes to ground, 86 probably goes to positive but it's open right now. 30 goes to voltage. It's loaded, which means that wires. Oh, let's see that again. There we go. Never trust the first reading if it's if it's odd. Okay, so I'm loading the circuit and I got a good voltage, so that means that that wire is good all the way back to the battery. If I go here to 87, then I get uh, zero, which is an indication that that uh, that terminal is going to ground right now and more than likely it's going through the clutch okay so just by reading voltage and knowing how a relay works I've identified how this system works now there are a couple of things here the voltage is the safest reading and quite frankly it's the easiest reading to get the most information the quickest because you see voltage and continuity so right here I'm seeing continuity and right here I'm seeing voltage and I'm seeing them both with one reading and I'm not having to move the meter around and I'm not having to think about it so that's very important okay now what about ohms well if I know that this wire terminal goes to the ground on the switch then that means it's probably going to be able to allow me to read the continuity of the uh, clutch and I simply have to read there and sure enough I'm reading 3.9 about 4 ohms what you need to understand is, right now, I am reading all the way from this terminal back through all of the wiring to the clutch to ground and back. I'm ohming out the clutch from the relay. This is very, very useful. Okay? So I'm measuring ohms. I get 3.9 ohms. Plain old, simple ohms. So that's how you use the ohm meter and the voltmeter together, and I'm testing everything from here from the one spot in the relay and I'm able to see it all. If I want to use the continuity buzzer, I flip it to continuity and then I simply measure again and I get continuity but notice I'm also reading the 3.9 ohms. So when you use the continuity buzzer, make sure that you use the buzzer and the ohm reading to get the actual correct answer. It's not enough to simply see, uh, to hear the buzzer you have to make sure that you know that the um, uh, that the, the ohm value is going to be acceptable as well. So the buzzer is good for knowing when things happen, but not necessarily knowing if they're happening right. Now, one of the other things you can do is to use the amp meter. And to use the amp meter, I can jump across 30 and 87. And if I jump across 30 and 87, that's the switch contacts in the relay and I should be able to see the clutch work. It doesn't matter where anything else is. 
I saw 12 volts at 30 and I saw continuity at 87. So the only thing missing is the switch. The amp meter works like a switch. So I simply move the red lead and now I have to be very careful because this particular meter is now a jumper wire and I have to be careful. Okay, but let's think about something for a second. If you remember any of your ohms law math, 12 volts divided by 4 ohms, I should get about 3 amps. So I should have about a 3 amp flow if everything's working right. This terminal, 87, went to the clutch, and this terminal, and sure enough, I'm getting 3 amps and I can hear the clutch kick. So I am jumping across the switch contacts, 30 and 87, 30 and 87, and that jump with this amp meter is allowing me to see what current is flowing and to actually hear the clutch, see the meter, know that current's flowing, know that I don't have opens, I didn't blow a fuse, I don't have a short, and the clutch is working. So by simply using the amp meter in this case, I'm able to confirm that the clutch works and I'm done. It's a very simple test and it really isn't very, uh, it's, it's really pretty safe as long as you know where you are in the circuit. But you have to know where you are in the circuit and if you do, then the amp meter works exceptionally well and gives you a lot of information that you might otherwise not have had.